morning and welcome again to the business segment of the Bumper Breakfast Show, your favorite station, your favorite uh, show every morning. My name is Abiola Ismail, and as we usually do it, I'll give you the stories that made the headline in the business of world around Nigeria last week. And as you and I know, that the Central Bank of Nigeria is trying all possible best to ensure that the co uh, concurrent uh, depreciation of the Naira is you know, put uh, to a stake and trying to ensure that we have value for our currency. And one of the strategies is this. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has taken a significant step to manage and stabilize the Naira payout for diaspora remittances in a bid to curtail the rapid depreciation of the local currency in, in circulation. In a circular issued last week, that was on um, August 9, 2023, addressed to authorized dealers, international money transfer operators, and the general public, the CBN introduced exchange rate limit to Naira payout to diaspora remittances. The circular signed by the Director of the Trade and Exchange Department at the CBN, Ozo Emana Naji, detailed the new framework for Naira pay, pay, payment options. According to the directive, the Naira payout for diaspora remittances should be conducted within a range of minus 2.5% to plus 2.5% of the previous day's average rate on the investors and exports, that is R and E window. The acting CBN governor, Fola Sodun Shonobi, emphasized the CBN's commitment to making the forex market more effect efficient and effective, aimed heightened demand for the dollars. All these measures is just to ensure that we have a very strong currency against the green witch, which has become uh, something that is uh, going every now and then up and up. And that story that came up last week is the Nigerian National Dep the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation (NPC) Limited, you know, has secured a three billion US dollars crude repayment loan to support the naira and stabilize the foreign exchange market. A, a T statement posted on the official account of the company on X, former known as Twitter, said on Wednesday, that was last week. The statement noted that the oil companies secured the funding from the headquarters of the African Export Import Bank in Cairo. The NNPC Limited and Afrixim Bank have, joined, have jointly signed a commitment letter and terms sheet for an emergency three billion US dollars crude oil repayment loan, NNPCCL said in a ten statement on Wednesday. The signing, which took place today, that was on Wednesday. At the bank's headquarters in Cairo, Egypt, we provide some immediate disbursement that will enable the NNPC Limited to support the federal government in its ongoing fiscal and monetary policy reforms aimed at stabilizing the exchange rate market. That was the statement that came out then. And another story is the inflation, which we also form the bulk of our discussion today. Nigeria's annual inflation rose to its highest level in nearly two decades in July at 24.08% against 22.79% in June, worsening the cost of living crisis in Africa's largest economy as President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's reform continued to take effect. Inflation in Nigeria has been in double digits since 2016, eroding savings and income and prompting the central bank to hike interest rates to their highest level in nearly two decades. Food inflation, which accounts for the bulk of Nigeria's inflation basket, rose to 26.9% in July from 25.25% in June. That was the story that made the headline last week. And our discussion this morning is centered on the continuous rise in inflation. Now, let's listen to this. In July 2023, Nigeria experienced a surge in inflation with the rate reaching a new 18-year high of 24.08 percent. This marks an increase of 1.29 of percent from the previous month's rate, which was 22.79 percent, as reported by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBC. The rise in inflation was majorly driven by high prices of food items over the course of a year, 
the inflation rate has risen by 4.44 percent stating from 19.64 percent in july 2022 now to do justice to this issue i have with me in the studio the immediate past president of the chartered institute of bankers sorry the chartered institute of taxation of nigeria citn mr adesino adidayo good morning sir good morning good morning to discuss this issue of increasing uh, inflation rate and its impact on the economy looking at the economy generally inflation is now 24.08 percent folded up and we are hearing another company a major company is also threatening to shut down what are your reactions to this issue now well the, you see before we even talk of reactions let me first even appreciate you for having me thank you so much but before we talk about even the reaction let's look at the economy from the perspective of an insider and that is why i always say that look we do not need to go too much into trying to wrap our head against something that is already looking like apparent now we are having a situation where inflation can come from three or four directions three specifically maybe increase the money that is supplied in terms of cbn, CBN. cost push inflation where the people who are now manufacturing are having higher level of input costs cost and therefore production. they have to talk about recovering costs that's the cost push then the demand pull maybe we talk about a situation where we're demanding a particular product and then ultimately this is now leading to scarcity of that product thereby leading up to the price now look at the nigerian situation we're having multiple challenges affecting all the industry we are talking about and then secondly they are talking about their input even we that are even the consumers we're having challenges relating to issue of subsidy removal and all these are things that are bound to impact on the cost of product so it is no longer surprising that the first victim of such things will not be the issue that borders on things that are necessary such as food and therefore we're having this high level of inflation now the second level of prayer is now say how long do we have this before you start talking about normalizing and this is something that has to do with things that similar to even of a lady getting pregnant if you no matter how much in a hurry you are you can't nine force months. a lady to deliver in one month it is going to take nine months it's a process thing and for us to be able to address this, the policy issues are in threefold. We must address trade policy, we must address monetary policy, and must address fiscal, fiscal policy. policy. These are all important criteria, mm -hmm. and we need to put this in perspective. Now, some economists say our economic policies are pushing the people into mass poverty. Would you subscribe to this assertion? The challenge is that we see mass poverty also does not happen overnight. Okay. You don't just wake up in the morning being rich and in the evening you become poor. There are issues that borders on this. Let's look at the issue of uh, at the middle class. Okay. Can we really say that we have middle class in the Nigeria of today? The answer is a no-no. Because it's either you are rich or you are poor. poor. Because when you think you are in the middle, all of a sudden you just realize that issue of a source of subject removal and then you are finding it difficult to talk about failing your vehicles. <laughs> so many things are going to start happening. Then you start talking about adjustment. And do you know the irony of it all? There is this wrong impression being created that virtually a lot of people are working in the public sector. The answer is a no-no. Because the increase in the salary of those in the public sector does not translate to the increase in the salary of those in the small and medium scale enterprises. It doesn't. And this is something we need to first get clear and realize that the Nigerian challenge of today is more, is more impactful negatively on a lot of people than the positive impact and we need to start addressing some areas but now let me now go to the lighter and the brighter side of it all the issues of the regulation being done in terms of even the impact that we are facing those things that we are being hiding under the carpet it leads to ultimately we are going to now get the right model of the economy and start addressing the part that we need to address and not run away from the problem we just have to face it now presently we have a record that shows that about four million smes have folded up and we have a lot of manufacturing um, companies you know exodus going to another country our neighboring country now with the issue of what we have found ourselves now and 24.8 percent or 08 percent how do you think this can be viable the I said something earlier, I said we are about getting to really know. You see, when somebody is poor and then is trying to pretend as if he's rich, sooner or later, the thing that is going to define his status will show itself. 
So the Exodus and is now defining the Exodus is defining our status. There are so many things we have been running away from addressing. Mm -hmm. We are talking about security challenges in Nigeria today. Some areas are being are looking scary, even for our young ones to talk about starting business from. Some areas are now looking as if do you want to go there? You should need to be careful. But now let's talk about the real uh, aspect. The issue of the movement, the mass exodus of companies in Nigeria did not start today. Okay. It started when we start having some issues and we are missing the policies uh, matching. Now we are now here and the issue of the current administration is that look let's address this problem. Let people now believe in us. You see when trust deficit is hanging in the balance, people will be looking for where they think they are stable. And like somebody said, capitalism is not emotion driven. You don't give money, they move it to a place where the money comes in. So we need to start addressing the Nigerian situation. And by addressing this, we need to start talking about policies that will make people to believe in the system. Now we are talking about their financial challenges. If we do not have the inflow of foreign exchange effectively, then it's not a question of how many of our people are strong enough to go into this business and be able to thrive in the face of rising competition, which are also the competition of those that are outside. African Continental Free Trade Agreement is coming up. Yes. We are going to have an issue where... It's supposed to have started from yeah, January, exactly. but now we are still... Exactly. Because it will still come up. Because sure. it has now become a policy-based policy. thing. Now, by the time it comes up, the question is, are Nigerians ready? Are we ready, ready for this opportunity? Opportunity comes with risk. Yes. So when we say we want to take the opportunity, are we aware of the type of risk we can take yes. and not find ourselves being on the receiving end yes. of the economy? These are questions we must answer. I must answer it fast. And you talk about policies now. Now, installation of phased economy reform that might, or they just explain that might, you know, have, um, uh, that Nigeria will have a stable pull out of the critical situation and the forex situation what area of policy will you now say that should be you know, looked into thank you very much i like the dimension the question is not taking because now is a question of let's now move from a uh, problem identification and talk about being solution driven now being solution driven means we must identify that nigeria as an economy as an interface with other economies that's number one, not reality. That means that we should first ask asking ourselves, what is our trade policy looking like? I read recently, and I listened to it, that India, for example, is already being able to attract Apple to talk about putting a manufacturing base in India. And you look at the population of India, 1.4. The question is, Billions. are we a consuming nation, nation or a or producing a nation? Are we saying we do not have what it takes to, to make an I mean, Apple uh, uh, product to be manufactured in Nigeria. If we cannot even attract Apple being the this thing, we can look for something to have and then make it clear that this particular one, Nigerians are the one being employed and is being beneficial. You can imagine what we are talking about. That is on the trade policy. Now, talk about monetary policy. We are struggling. You wake up today and you are talking about exchange rate being scary. And then you are dependent on this. So it means what to consider cheap yesterday becomes very expensive today. We need to address monetary policy. Now we need to also talk about the fiscal policy. Is it friendly? Is it attracting the right set of people into the country? Are we also developing our law, administration and policy as it relates to tax and other fiscal policy related items? We need to. Now, let me not make it look as if it's going to be an African magic thing. No. Because the truth of the matter means that these are processes, these are things that must take time to be. But let us just know we are going in the right direction. And then it is easy for us to bear the pain. Now, part of what the government is trying to do to um, alleviate the poverty or the poverty or to try to bring down the uh, burden is this palliative. Just a few days ago, the federal government announced 5 billion naira to each state, totaling about 185 billion naira. As believe that must get to this how do you see this is is, is that what we're expecting or we're expecting a reform that we you know jump start industrialization in nigeria let me say something again you see there's no way we can solve a problem with the level of thinking that created it in the first place hmm. so that is something we must first go with in terms of wisdom uh, package now if you are talking about uh, a palliative in this form Will it address this issue from a short term perspective, medium term, or long term? Long -term. Now, I would now just do a brief narrative here. Um, I, I mean, the issue of the fact could be established that when 
China was trying to address the issue of bringing people out of poverty, not putting them into poverty. They started with a cooperative based model where this thing is done in such a way you can see the impact on the greater number of people. That is one. And if you look at it in this perspective, and you are trying to put in billions into the economy, is it billions in trying to create a micro industry? Or is it billions in trying to address the challenges of those in the people? You see, the point is this. Let's now raise our thinking to a higher level. If you give somebody food to eat, let's say you were at a party 48 hours ago, and you heard so much that at the end of the day, they were asking you to take and you couldn't take. You are still going to get hungry three days after. So the question now is this, are we giving palliative in order to address the hunger need or we are giving palliative in order to address the productive need of the people? We need to be looking at it from a productive perspective. Give or take, and these are things that has to do with, if people are doing something and they are sure that a little amount of money will come in for quite a long period of time, they will start adjusting. And even if they have to do other things to augment it, there is still a guaranteed income. Let's start addressing the industry factor. We shouldn't just be talking about it. Now, thank God for where you are now. You are talking about addressing the industry factor. Now, you are a professional in taxation. But the president to say, and we have the immediate, much, past. The immediate <laughs> past president to put it. Now, we have a lot of multiple uh, taxes around and there has been hue and cry from the manufacturing sector for government to address this issue. Now, how do you think we can tackle this? Okay, let me also put it in perspective. Thank God the government or the current government is looking in the right direction because that we need reform. We have to be factual about that. But we now want to also ensure that uh, the government with the political will is raising this. I wish I want to believe we, we are at that level now. Now, the next thing is to ask again. I mentioned something earlier. I said we have to look at the law, we have to look at the administrative part, and we have to look at the policy. Now, the current state of things means that we are talking about three gov uh, level of governments. We have the local, we have the state, we have the federal. Now, when you are trying to address it at a level, you need to also ask yourself. The state government has a, an issue relating to declaring the dividend of democracy for their people. The local government now we want to strengthen them in order to make them more uh, effective. Uh, effective in terms of service delivery. These are all areas we need to now say, how do they work together? Because working together, if they don't work effectively together, the people who are doing uh, this issue of productive things see a situation where so many things are coming from which particular area. area. Which one do we know the one we should pay attention to? And be able to get that so there is that aspect again that borders on our law and the issue of the various administrative organ working effectively which i believe the Taiwo Edele committee will be able to come up with now at the other federal level you have the state actors and the non-state actors for the state actors now the question is this how are we at attacking this issue of revenue why ask somebody to pay for this and something close to that is also being asked for another agency these are all things we need to now streamline. And I believe one of the things I can take away from the little engagement I've been seeing in uh, with the media is that this is something a lot of us are aware of and we feel it is time for us to address it without necessarily shooting the government in the leg. And I believe it is going to be something that we are there because my factual association and, 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 and the employer's consultative assembly, everybody is aware that we need to address this. So that why we can be curious. Now, you are talking about addressing this issue. And we are still on the verge of making our IGR buoyant every uh, month or every week. Now, the local government is looking for IGR. The uh, state government is also looking for IGR and all that. And the two of them are coming on the manufacturer, on you and I. And everything is boiled down the cost of production. You, you see, let me let me have a funny dimension to it because I remember when we were in secondary school, where they say go and buy biology, and then you say you have to buy. You are not talking to somebody. I want to buy bio. I want to buy law. I want to buy G. <laughs> the question is this: What you have meant to just do is talk about biology. Let's look at a situation where you are aware of what you need your revenue for. And then you say, pay this revenue and let's have an administrative system where all the various areas get it. Now, let me now give you a practical one. We bought flights. Mm -hmm. Do you know when you eventually pay like 95000 or something for a flight? 
and you look at the breakdown of the flight breakdown a lot of amount of money is going to various aspects the VAT part the fan and all these other things but that singular factor you know you are paying 95,000 for flight from here to Abuja it takes it makes your mind to go away from how it is eventually sub distributed mm -hmm. these are the type of thing that we put people's mind to know I'm paying these tax not that I'm paying tax A, B, C, D. Then you now want to ask, why charge me with this when all you need to do is that this one should have been sufficient to cover all these other things. These are the areas we want government to be able to streamline process and administration in order to address it effectively. Now, for Nigeria now to invite foreign investors to the country, we have seen a lot of them trying to move, but we are trying as much as possible to see that we have an enabling environment now, what do you think government should focus on now? Energy one, we know that. What other areas do you think government should focus on? Now, if I have to say this, we are talking about over 200 million Nigerians. I'm one of them. And if I have to also say it again, there are some things that are the concern for a growing population. Hmm. You are talking about issue of housing. You are talking about issue of feeding. You are talking about, about, about 18, 18 million deficit. You are talking about issue of education. And the fact remains that if we do not have this effectively focused on, it means that if I should collect 100,000 today, maybe at the end of the day, if I'm not careful, over 80, 85 percent would have been going for all this. Now, add that to the fact that in the, in the Lagos state where we are now, for example, people come all the way from maybe Yanopaja to, to work in Victoria Island. And then you ask again, how much of their income is going into meeting transport needs? All these are things we should start looking at because issue of economic development is not an isolated thing. One impacts the other. So if you ask me, the first thing we should be focusing on is food sufficiency. That's number one. The second thing we should be focusing on is issue of accommodation, basic needs. Mm. Because if you say something is low cost, and those in the low income well, end will spend eternity it. before they can get that. Mm. It is no longer low. It has got it to middle. Mm. All these are areas we should start addressing. Because if your people are not happy, the question again is that the employers who are coming in or the industrialists coming in are aware that there are challenges here that can trigger unnecessary unrest when it shouldn't. So we should start focusing on the basic need. Then we move from there to the secondary level. And the most important thing on average Nigeria, especially those of us from this side of the, of the country, we focus the education part is something we do not want to negotiate. And let's have that. Because some of us went to public schools. And we can tell you, as at that period of time, the gap between the knowledge in, uh, base of those in public and private is not considered so wide. Now the question is, why are we not attracting the same set of people? to help us develop the public sector. This is very important and we should focus on it. Now, the point now we are talking about is increasing in the inflation rate. And we have seen a gradual increase from July 2022 to July 2023. And it has been uh, a WGT which we are also calling for how government will make the enabling environment possible in Nigeria for you and I, for manufacturers, for everyone. I want to appreciate Mr. Adeshino Adedayo, the immediate past president of Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN. He has been my guest today. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Thank you for having me. And I believe by next week when I will be joining you again on Bumper Breakfast Business Segment, has to remain Abiola Ismail. Do have a good day.